Um, yeah, so I'm Nicola Beeling. Um, I'm a painter, as Natalie said. And during lockdown, um, I found myself making a series of paintings of coral and coral reefs. Um, and I'm not really sure where they came from. I don't know if it's something about escaping to another world, um, possibly. Um, so most of the paintings that I made are quite big. There's one of them is behind me. Um, and today I'd quite like to see if I can make one on a smaller scale. Um, and if you would like to join in with me, that would be brilliant. Um, quickly run through materials. So hopefully we've got some, some big brushes um, and some, some much finer, smaller, pointy brushes. Um, some of those are quite old. And then I've got a whole mixture of paints. I've got gouache, um, gouache tubes, I've got acrylics. Most of this is just stuff that I had already, so hopefully you will have a good selection as well. Um, these are liquid acrylic, I think, I'm quite sure. Um, and before we start with actual painting, I just wanted to show you some images. Can you see that? Of coral, just to look at some shapes and colours. So these are just things that I stole from the internet. Um, so I like shapes of these, the corals like hands and fingers. And the colour, I mean it's a colour that it really hits you when you look at these pictures. Every single colour you can imagine, I mean there's no way you can use the wrong colour because every colour in the world is in these. Um, and again different shapes, ferns and fronds and all sorts of things. So we're going to get rid of that because we're not copying. Um, let's get going. So one of the things I like about the, the underwater worlds, these sort of scenes, they, they kind of come up from the, the dark of the bottom of the seabed and then they come up towards the light where the daylight is coming through the water. So I'd quite like to try and create that as a background in the painting. So I'm not bothering the palette here. I'm just literally going to mix it on the paper, not being too fussy. So I'm starting with light at the top. Then, oh, I'm going to go a bit darker. I'm going to use this. I think this is quite a nice blue. This is an ultramarine blue. Squidge it around a bit, a bit more. So I find I have to be quite generous with the paint because I like it to be fairly opaque and dense. Um, I think we do like a darker, darker blue again. Ooh, that's kind of dried up. Never mind. What else have we got? There's another Prussian blue. Every other thing about this workshop is you will end up being covered in paint, but don't worry. It all washes off. So big brush. And I'm just going to do lots and lots of horizontal strokes to cover the paper and most of the table by the looks of it. And that, the paint that's in blobs, just mix it in. You don't need to be too precious about this at all. And as you get down into a darker level, just bring it up into the lighter part again. You try and take the paint right to the edges so it's like seamless. You don't need to use blue, I mean, you can use green and yellow, black, anything that you fancy really. So here we're getting darker, deeper in underwater. This blob there, that's the dried up bit of paint, but don't worry about that. And then down on the seabed, I'm going to use a sepia, this is. But you can use any kind of pink or yellow or whatever you fancy, it's a sandy colour. 
So let's squidge that on the bottom. Right. I'm just actually the hardest part is trying to find a bit to hold up to hold on the paper with without getting covered in paint. Right, again just blend the sandy seabed in with the water. So I think that's okay. I'm gonna leave that there. Now I'm, need, I'm going to make a kind of rock shape. We need something for the coral to kind of sprout from. So it's going to be a big tall rock. The top of it is going to be about here. And the bottom of it is going to be about here. And then just like any wiggly shape in between doesn't really matter. Um, yeah, I'm going to scrape some of that paint out. This is just a piece of plastic. You don't need to do this. I'm just kind of reducing the amount of paint that's on the paper so I can maybe add another color. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna make the rock black again. Um, but I'll use a brown brush, so I'll get bits of brown in there as well, probably. very roughly i mean to be honest you're not going by the time you finish you're not going to see much of this rock so don't worry about it too much there's, there's the bottom you can have some pebbles around the bottom as well so that's your background oops i've got a fun mark never mind um now i'm going to completely cheat because i could carry on with it with this painting it's very wet um and actually it doesn't matter that much if you get wet paint bleeding, different colors bleeding into each other. But just to speed things up today, I'm gonna to put that one aside. Um, say those famous words. Here's one I made earlier. So similar things, similar colors. We've got a black rock seabed coming up to the light. So now I'm going to start planting the coral. So small brushes at the ready. And for the first coral, I don't know, what are they? Plants, branches, branches. I'm going to go with some really dark colors because these are going to be the, the forms in the background. And then gradually as we come more to the foreground, they're, they're, colors will get brighter and lighter. So I'm going for black again, I think easier than anything. Um, and you can do all sorts of shapes. I mean, if you want to look online in more detail at different coral shapes, it's so much you can look at so um yeah i'm just gonna do some little whippy things tendrils again don't worry about it too much oh now i'll do a, some kind of branch thing up here a lot of the coral i think the shape is a bit like a tree, so the branches come up and spread out, and you're just filling in the branch shapes. Um, and then we have some of these that look like fingers, a little bit fatter. Oops, that doesn't look like a finger. Never mind, this is a kind of special blobby sort of coral, which I've just invented. So you just move around the rock and put some of these dark shapes in. Some sort of feathery thing going on down here. Paint's a bit dry. So 
Um, that's going to be really glad. A sea urchin right on top. The sea urchins, you know, sea an enemy. More or less look like a cardboard loo roll with tentacles coming out of out of the top of them. Mm -hmm. Right, so I'm going to stop there with these darker background shapes and come into the foreground with some red ink. And we'll dry that paint. Do I remember that every branch of coral has a kind of anchor point and you bring it back to that point and sprout from there as much as you like. So up here I'm going to do one of these. Like You know what they're called? If you start putting the coral from the top towards the bottom, you'll find that as you move down, you're overlapping on what you've done previously, and that. I think it just makes that effect of like a very crowded, jostling rock with all sorts of life forms on it and different types of coral overlapping each other, which seems to work quite well. Oh, the reed noises. So here I'm going to do. I think we're going to run out of time, but um, trying to do this quite quickly, a bit more quickly than I usually would. As always, if anybody has any questions, please do send them to an A and we'll relay them. Um, yeah, that's another big some of the coral has these kind of twisted shapes. It's like it starts growing one way and then thinks, oh no, I want to go that way. Oh, let's go that way. Quite contorted looking. Again, it looks a bit like a tree with branches and it's sprouting from there. We have now had a question in Nicola asking how long you normally spend on a painting of this size. Um, I would probably do it over two or three days. So go back to it work on it and go back to it over a few days and sort of look at it a bit in between to see what needs adjusting or working on. Um, yeah, so a couple of days. Has it been interesting in terms of the process to work at this speed? It's a bit nerve wracking. Um, yeah, we'll see. I mean, I think I will feel that it's quite unfinished. Um, so I might just carry on with it mm -hmm. once our time is up. Um, right, what color can I use now? Maybe a kind of 
creamy white color. It's all clean brush. <laughs> Sorry. It's quite good if you've got shaky hands with some of these because you get nice prickly textures going on. We've had a question, Nicola, about the kind of paper you're using, what's the best paper to use for this? Yeah, um, I think any sort of paper that's got a reasonable amount, reasonable amount of weight to it, because, because it's so wet to start with, if you use a thin paper, it kind of tends to buckle. Um, and it's just slightly annoying. But I've, I did some practice pieces using the insides of cereal packets. Um, that actually worked really well because the, the, it's thin card and it held the paint really well. Um, yeah, so anything, heavy paper, cardboard. I suppose if you want to go really smart, you could have watercolor paper, quite heavy watercolor paper. So actually watercolour is the only paint that wouldn't, I don't, well, maybe it would, I don't think would work very well with this because you need this kind of opacity. So when you're, when you're kind of layering one coral on top of another coral, you don't want things to show through. So that's why gouache and acrylic work better than more translucent things. We actually had a question on that topic of paints asking whether you use oil in it, oil in any of your work as well. Um, yeah, I mean, oil is my comfort zone. I'm painting behind me is oil. Um, but obviously, I can't really do that in the workshop. <laughs> um, yeah, and with oil, you get all this lovely silky colours and fluidity. Talking of which, I'm going to do like another very fluid line here. And remember, if you're doing this, that because it's all underwater, try and relax with it. Hold the brush very lightly because I think if you're like really focusing, it's not all, all really kind of tense with it. Just relax and try and be fluid. Um, so there's no like the colours, there's no wrong line, there's no right line. There's some fronds in that. Right, what colour haven't I used? Pink, maybe. Let's go for it. We also had a question of if you do go on to add some. Uh, more after the workshop than the finished result. Um, yeah, I might do. <laughs> yeah. Is that cheating? <laughs> well, you're saying sort of uh, find the kind of oil uh, uh, really good. The fluidity in this acrylic is looking amazing already. So mm. I think the kind of liveliness of the speed has something to be said for it. Yeah, it's kind of fun. It's a bit take no prisoners, isn't it? That's well, it's hard. interesting because a lot of the workshops so far have used the brush in such different ways. Mm -hmm. um, and it's nice to see that with the one set of material, you would have you know, made to get the result. Oh, I know. I've got the fans I had just. 
that amazing pink colour, which I think we need some of that in our lives. Um, the old seat. Just use all sorts of colours, any colours that you like and any combinations of colours. We just had two more comments and they're just saying how good good the painting looks. Is that because it's upside down? I oh, know it's not upside down. Oh, really. <laughs> Another conversation that most artists don't really have this kind of encouragement in all these people watching. So it is a new kind of experience. Yeah, I'm trying not to think about that. So yeah. yeah. Thanks, Tim. <laughs> That was actually Louis Nicola. Oh, sorry. <laughs> you just from you just from laptop land, so you all sound the same. Right, I've got down to ground level, so I might just do a few small things down from there. Got lots of time. We? Really? Oh. sit down then. I hope we haven't got any coral experts watching because they'll go, what is that? It doesn't exist. And when I've got this white, I'm going to do a few bits up here. behind that one. That goes up. It's also behind that one. It's quite nice actually if you've got a slightly dodgy old brush you can get quite interesting patterns with it from broken bristles and Let's have a bit through here. Oh, we've got a spot. Never mind. Let's join that in. Okay. Kitchen roll, we need lots of that. Um, so at the moment I'm thinking it's looking quite lopsided. There's a lot on this side, not so much there. So I'm just going to do something over there. I'm not sure what. Maybe a bit of brown. Um, We've had a comment, Nicola, um, saying um, the love of watching use of colour and the way that you use white to kind of add to the painting. Sorry, I didn't catch all of that. Um, so we've had a comment talking about yeah. um, they love the structure and the use of colours um, and how you're using white to kind of painting. The white kind of, I think the black as well, I think it creates a kind of pop. To the other colours. Mm. So if you were just using primary colours the whole time, they 
I don't know, they, they kind of end up fighting with each other, but as soon as you bring black and white into the mix, it makes them sing more somehow. Right, so yeah, these bits do look like kind of cooked spaghetti or something. It's wobbly things. Right, I'm going to um, go back into what I've done now. Um, partly with white and with some other colours. So, for example, this ochre colour um, coral there. I'm going to use a really pale whitey yellow and just bring in a few more branches. Which will hopefully look as if they're in front of the other ones. And then using that same colour, I'm just going to outline some of these. So it looks maybe as if they're catching the light a bit. Just remember the light is coming from up above the water where it's a nice sunny day. Um, and I can do that kind of thing with this grey one. He's quite dull actually. I might put some another colour. Again, that's this is really pale. And if you just follow along the top edges where the the light could be hitting it. Um, I do this dark bluey kind of palettes. So I'm going to use a bluey black and just bring that up into the stem and follow it along. And the paint should do quite nice things without without you having to um, work too hard. Really. Just a bit there. I'm not quite sure how that joins on. Never mind. Um, else can we do so this coral here again I'm going to give it a bit more definition I need another hand for these brushes.
if I'm very quiet. I think we're all just a bit mesmerized. Yeah. <laughs> Still there. I'm gone home. So this yellow thing here, I don't think that's showing up very well, so I'm going to maybe try and bring a bit of orange in it. Um, and then we've got this pink guy down here. I'm confused with all my brushes now. Give him a bit of. You know, coral sometimes has those little tiny holes on. In. Get the blue in the shadow a bit. And again, I'm just going to use some white to kind of catch some light onto the top edges there. And that brush was a bit wet. Trust the kitchen roll. Um, same with the pink one, nice dark red. Maybe I'll just mix that pink with some white. Find it.
Mai che la detta anche. I feel like there should be something down here. Let me just. Try putting one of these round oval. So you could add shells or fish. I don't know what that is. Some sort of coral. Um, what else? I just see an enemy here. Again, this is like cardboard do roll. Tentacles.
Oh, uh, someone's so uh, Eileen Skellen one a unit in South East London's just come up saying they've enjoyed all the sessions, but yours has been the best so far. <laughs> we'll um, just unmute Nicola. Yeah, we'll just ask you to unmute on your phone, Nicola, so we can hear from you for the last ten minutes. I just said I love you. <laughs> Can you hear that? I mean, not you, the Eileen Skellen unit. They'll Can you be hear able me? To, able to hear, yes, Nicola. Adam? They will be able to hear you, yes. Good. Yeah, that's brilliant. Um, yeah, I don't know if anyone's still watching, but I just wanted to do one thing, which is create a kind of shadow at the bottom of the, of the coral reef. Have we got time to do that? Yeah, we've got another time. Oh, it's really quick. No, it's just to do that, which can work quite well. This brush might be a bit thick. Is to turn the painting upside down, and because the light is coming from here, so the bottom of the reef is going to be quite shadowy. Um, so again, quite nice to have this pop of black. But now you've got to do the shadows of the coral you've made, but in reverse which can get a bit confusing. So that's going that way, so now it needs to go that way. There's the anemone an an in reverse. And some of those pointy bits. So I can't actually see what this looks like. So I've just done that really quickly, but if you spend a bit more time over it and try and, as if you had a mirror of these shapes, try and put some of them down onto the sandy floor of the, the seabed. Can look quite cool. We just had a load more messages. So much for the session, Nicola. And everyone. Thank you. We're still here as well, so we're not on our own. A big thanks from the young people from Seven Green, the unit in Seven Oak. So thanks for joining us, guys. So obviously, if you enjoy doing these, you can carry on doing them in all sorts of different colour combinations and you could try a black background or a really pale background or green. Right, I think I can stop there. Um, well, it looks amazing. <laughs> Thank you. So, so much. I think it's, um, we've all just been a bit mesmerised watching it. But um, yeah, thank you so, so much. And uh, yeah, we hope everyone at home or in units, wherever you are joining in, um, give it a try. And um, you can send in images to us of your work. You can send actual pieces and we will 
all the details are on our website, hospital-reef.com. Um, yes, thank you. Thank you. It's been good fun. And I'd love to see any work that's been made during or after the session by people that have been watching. That would be amazing. Great. Um, well, thank you. We're going to leave it there for today. Um, but please join us next week um, at 2 p.m. We've got the fantastic Sarah Nay joining us. Um, so we hope to see you there. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Nicola. Bye. Bye. Bye.